So I'm finally getting in some more affordable gaming laptops into the studio. I wanna to try to get more in this here because most of the laptop reviews we see are of expensive laptops and everybody can't afford expensive laptops. This is a good indicator of what you can get for around a thousand to $1,200. The Asus Tough F16. Now, I personally feel like this design is really nice. You have this beautiful gray lid, you have the Tough logo on the top. It really is an industrial looking laptop. It's not super heavy, like it weighs only about five pounds, so it's still portable enough, but obviously it's not gonna be a thin and light gaming laptop. In terms of actual design, most of it is made out of plastic, but it does feel solid. Like there's a little bit of lid flex on the top. I do like the fact that you get a glimpse of the lights that showcase the battery and the HD working its way. And then on the left-hand side, you have a good selection of IO. You have your power connector, RJ45, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, and then you have a regular USB Type-C port and another USB-A port along with your combo audio jack. On the right hand side, all you have is a single USB-A port. Now, obviously I would have loved to have all the ports further at the back or even on the back of the laptop, but again, this is not ASUS's most high-end design. So they're using some of their older form factors, but look, performance on this guy is really good. Like my unit comes with an i7 13th gen HX CPU. So they're using last year's processor to keep the price down, but they are pairing it with an NVIDIA RTX 4060. This specific unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. You have a 16 inch display and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Performance has been good, exactly what you'd expect for a 13th gen processor. So obviously not as fast as this year's 14th gen processor, but very similar single core speeds. Multi-core speeds are faster than most Core Ultra laptops, but not faster than the Core Ultra 9. If you're buying this for gaming or any sort of productivity-based work, this processor is more than capable to handle it, regardless of whether you're using Adobe Photoshop or Premiere Pro. Now, because this laptop only has a 1920 by 1200 display, you can buy a version with a QHD one. This is obviously gonna be able to handle all titles respectively well with an RTX 4060. I was able to get the GPU to basically go up to about 115 watts. So it, you know, it's a good GPU of 4060. It's not the fastest, but it's still good enough to play most titles at this resolution. Now the average core clock speeds are very respectable, always staying over 3000 megahertz, which is really good for an HX Intel CPU. Also thermals were pretty good, like it never got over 90 degrees Celsius. It did hover around 87 to 88, but it always stayed below. Fan noise is what you'd expect from a gaming laptop. Like if you're putting this on turbo mode and you're pushing it for a long time, expect the fans to get close to 60 decibels. You put it on performance mode with a tiny bit of a performance drop, fans will drop by a few decibels. And of course, you can have a more quieter experience by putting it on silent mode with the expense of losing more performance. Now this does have advanced Optimus, which means it has a MUX switch and you can go back and forth between hybrid mode and using just the discrete GPU, depending on your situation. Now you can obviously open up this laptop with one hand. The display doesn't go all the way back, but it does go back enough. And the deck of the keyboard is obviously made of plastic. As you can see here, because it's black, you will get a lot of fingerprints. The touchpad is just super dirty, but you do have a keyboard that does have 1.7 millimeters of travel distance. So very comfortable to type on, great for productivity, great for gaming. The texture of the keys is not the best. It's like that rubberized texture we've seen on very old gaming laptops, but it does have a full size numpad for those that want it. Now, personally, I don't want a numpad on a gaming laptop. I'd rather have the keys directly in the center, maybe slightly bigger, but at least it has one for those that do. Now look, this is only one zone of RGB. You can change it to any color you want. Right now I have it on blue and you do have transparent WASD keycaps. You do have a macro key over here that will take you directly to the armory crate. There is no fingerprint scanner and there is no Windows Hello facial recognition to log you in. Touchpad is a decent size, but it is made out of plastic and the sticker placement is just out of control. You have a massive sticker over here. You might as well just make the entire laptop out of stickers. And the Intel sticker is just completely crooked. And this is exactly what it looks like. Exactly what you would expect from a 720p camera. It just doesn't do a good job of 
reducing the exposure on my forehead. You guys let me know how the microphone sound. The other change this year with the F-Line is it went from 15 to 16 inches. So 16 inches now, 16 by 10 instead of 16 by nine, which is obviously better for a mixed gaming and productivity based style of work rather than just strictly gaming. It is 165 Hertz, which I feel is really good for this type of GPU. It's IPS level, which means you have a pretty decent color gamut. It's not perfect, but it's good enough but the color accuracy is fantastic. Like I'd be able to trust this for any sort of design work. The only thing I did not like about this laptop or the display rather is the brightness. Like it only gets up to 270 nits, which is not the brightest. I feel like 300 should be the absolute minimum, but if you're in a dark room, it's absolutely okay. Now getting in is very easy. It's just Phillips head screws. There is one captive screw on the bottom right. I'm not gonna talk about the speakers. There's two on the bottom. They just don't sound good at all. So it's not worth the conversation, but internally everything looks pretty good. You have five copper heat pipes, two big fans. You do have a anti-dust filter on the bottom over here. And then you have a bunch of swappable components. So you can obviously swap out the main NVMe SSD for something bigger if you want, but you do have a second slot to add a second drive right over here, swappable Wi-Fi card, and then you have two slots for RAM, which are obviously upgradable up to 64, but my unit only has 16. The battery is pretty big, like 90 watt hours, but the battery life is not good. I only got four hours and 32 minutes before needing to charge. So here's the bottom line. I think it's priced fair, right? And you know, it has all the essentials you'd want in a gaming laptop, even though it's using last year's HX CPU, but the difference between 14th and 13th gen is so minimal. It has all the components you'd expect in a gaming laptop that lets you upgrade it. It was consistent. I didn't have any issues with this laptop. You buy this, you're just gonna get a good solid RTX 4060 experience. What really comes down to it though is the price. The price is fair, but there's still a lot of inventory from last year that's a little bit cheaper. Like I saw a G16, for example, for 1100 bucks. I saw a G14 for 999 with the exact same GPU. While that stock is still available, it makes it harder to suggest this laptop. So while that's there, I suggest you buy that stuff first. And when that's gone, then this becomes the obvious answer. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.